Oh, man, we're already laughing. Good morning. I'm Mackenzie Roth. It's week 11 of the college football season, and Purdue is looking to pull off yet another upset. We are here to break everything down for you. Boilers versus Buckeyes right here on All Indiana Bets. I'm Jason Hammer. I went 4-1 on college football games last weekend. Follow me if you want to win some money, and we're going to win enough money today to make a lot of bad decisions. Let's go. Hey, I'm Scott Long. Yes, that is true. Actually, you were four and one. That was incredible. We have so many good picks this week, and it is going to happen right here, right now. Let's go. This is All Indiana Bets, presented for the people, powered by Caesar Sportsbook and Lunazul Tequila. Feed the Wolf. Man, as always, so great to see you. Hello and welcome to All Indiana Bets. Thank you again for making us part of your college football Saturday. Boys, how are we feeling today? I can't believe the season is almost over. Right, isn't that wild? Like we're getting ready for Thanksgiving. Yep. That's right. the rivalry games right around the corner. Right. It seems like just yesterday we were betting the family mortgage on these opening non-conference games. I know. And here we are. We're getting down to the nitty gritty here, Scott. We actually... For the first time all year during college, we've both had really good weeks during the NFL season together. Yes, who does Both of that? us. They're modest, so well, kind six of Six and yes. four between, and that might be like six and four. That's not good. That's really good. You yes. should watch the other, you know what? Go ahead and watch those other shows and lose money. Watch our show, make money this week. I like our picks this week. I do. I know Hammer's been kind of hemming and hawing. We'll see what happens on a couple of yours. The lines change. You got to be prepared for that, but uh, this is the show to make money this week. That's right. And if I've learned one thing from doing this show, in addition to the radio programs I do, even though I did go four and one, mm -hmm. I will hear about the one loss from everybody on social media. Yeah. I'll never hear about the wins that I yeah. have, but I'll get 55 tweets about the one loss that I had. Even from his wife. She, like, really fades you right. all the time. I love it. Right. We love Crystal. That's why we love her. All right, let's get to it, shall we? Let's make some money. Uh, we're going to begin with the Boilermakers. After knocking off third-ranked Michigan State last Saturday, Purdue now has two top five wins under its belt this season. And today, the Boilers will try to notch another when they visit number four, Ohio State. Now, the spike coming in at number 19 in the latest college football playoff rankings. Uh, Purdue is still a near three touchdown underdog heading into the horseshoe. So Hammer, we're going to start with you. Here's the question. Is 20 and a half too many points? Is that disrespectful? What do you say? I don't think it's disrespectful right. because Ohio State is at home. And keep in mind, Ohio State is looking for style points here. Yes. Because what style points means is that's just fancy talk for we need to run up the score to stay in the mix for the college football playoff. Ohio State's in the mix with a couple other teams, and they're all jockeying for some of those spots in that final four. I don't necessarily feel comfortable with the spread in this game, but there are some ways you can bet on this game without touching that point spread. And I'm going to get into that here in just a minute. But, Scott, I got the feeling you like the spread here. Mm. It's really, it's, it's, it's hard to imagine betting on a team or betting against a team like Ohio State that's won 24 straight games against Big Ten competition. Ryan Day has never lost in the Big Ten. So... This is three touchdowns, though. This is a team, Purdue, that won against the number three ranked team and the number two ranked team. And maybe did they belong as the number three and the two? Maybe not. But they're quality teams to talk about almost three touchdowns. That's where I think there is some disrespect going mm. on here with Purdue. All right. So you say there is some. All right. Let's get to uh, let's play some bets. People need to make some money for the holidays, Hammer. We're going to start with you. Okay. Like four and one, uh, picking college football games. By the way, yes, yes, yes. What are you starting off with today? Well, I'm going to keep it in this game here, Purdue and Ohio State. Mm -hmm. I said I don't like the point spread in this one because if Ohio State gets the opportunity to run up the score, they will do it for style points. But I do like a side on this one. You can bet on individual teams and the amount of points that they're going to score. And I liked this bet better when it was 20 and a half. I actually made this bet earlier in the week. Purdue over 20 and a half total points. It's now up to 21 and a half. And that kind of uh, gives me a little uh, 
trepidation there, but I will stick with it. I think Purdue is good for at least three touchdowns here. Even if they get one in garbage time against an Ohio State defense that's somewhat down by their standards, I think I will hitch my wagon to Purdue's point total today. I got it over 20 and a half. You might be able to still find that somewhere. 21 and a half in some spots. Let's go. All right, solid. Scott, what do you say? <sighs> He's speechless. This never happens. It doesn't happen. I got to take the boilers in this situation. Here's where I look at it is, Ohio State has really not had a top-notch victory this season. They lost to Oregon, which is the best team they've played. It all starts getting harder now. I ex uh, expect they're going to win the next few games, but they don't have like a cupcake next week. I think their vision is, oh, we're a 21 point favorite against Purdue. It's Purdue, who cares? I'm looking more forward to Penn State or Michigan State or, uh, or Michigan. So I think the Boilers stay within 14 to 17. David Bell will make enough plays for Hammer to cover his spread and me to cover mine. Now, I saw the graphic there. You're at like 63% picking college football games this year. Yeah. And for those who don't know, that's an amazing number. Like, God, yeah. That's that a ridiculously incredible. good number. Yeah. How confident do you feel on this? Because I'm willing to put that in my ball and on a budget parlay if Mr. 63% here feels good about it. Don't put it in your ball and a budget. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. <laughs> Too late. Too I'm late. doing it. I feel like that's going to jinx everything. <laughs> I don't want the pressure of balling on a budget, too. If we lose <laughs> balling on a budget, it's going to be Mr. 63% That's why there. I didn't want it. He's going to toss that hate mail that way. All right, it's time for a break. Don't go anywhere, though, because we are just getting started. We're going to break down Notre Dame. Uh, yes, they're playing today. It's exciting. They are. Versus they're in Virginia action, Mackenzie. And Indiana versus Rutgers. Plus, more picks on the way. Don't go anywhere. All Indiana best. We'll be right back. All Indiana Bets, presented for the people, powered by Caesar Sportsbook. Hey, welcome back to All Indiana Bets. I said we're going to talk IU and Hammer headed straight to the bar. Is that a coincidence <laughs> or... Oh, this happening. is uh, Thanks, here you sir. go. Here you go. <laughs> this is uh, creamy crimson without yes. the cream. I like it. I was told we're going to be talking about IU and Rutgers, and we're going to need a little booze if we're going to talk about this game. Oh, because, man. Woo. I'm a proud Hoosier. This is kind of rough. Like, good news and bad news, okay, for Hoosier fans. Okay, let's start with the bad news. Hoosiers have lost five straight, and they are one and four against the spread. I want to know what stretch. the good news is. What's right, the good news? The good news. All of us want. Okay, the good news IU could have either Michael Penix or Jack Tuttle uh, okay. back under center today. So that, that is good news. Hoosiers are, are a seven-point sure? favorite. Are we what? sure that's really good news? <laughs> Against a bad Rutgers team. All right, so I'm going to go to Scott for this one. Is this a good spot to finally back Indiana, my Hoosiers? Do you want to watch the game? <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I can tell you there's an Indiana game I would want to watch. It's not this. But I'd rather watch Wabash versus DePaul on Wish TV. Uh, That's so, such a great plug. Yeah. That's well, such a strong plug nice right there. Done, nice but done. wouldn't you rather watch two teams that really care versus Rutgers and in Indiana who do not? Uh, I, I, could, I couldn't tell you. Why would I even know? Mm. You couldn't get me to watch this game if Elizabeth <laughs> Hurley popped out of my TV <laughs> and passed out $100 bills. <laughs> This is the worst game on the slate today of major Division I programs. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not touching this one. Rutgers stinks. Indiana stinks. Thank God it's basketball season in Bloomington. Is that why you made these pretty strong? Uh, yes, they are strong. <laughs> Delicious. You're welcome. You're welcome. All right. Oh, producer Peters and my Notre Dame's playing today, guys. They, they, are. they are in the mix. You get that joke if you've been watching since day one. All right, so we're moving on. Since suffering their lone loss of the season to Cincinnati, Notre Dame has quietly gotten on a roll over the last month or so. Fighting Irish have now won four in a row, and they've covered the spread in each of those four wins. They're going to look to continue that trend today as they travel to take on Virginia. All right, Notre Dame is a six and a half point road favorite. So, Hammer, do you like the Irish to keep the streak alive? I like Notre Dame in this game. From a betting perspective, though, you've got options mm -hmm. because the point spread is still within a touchdown. And if you're a Notre Dame backer, you feel like that's pretty doable. But take a look at this over under. You might think that it's high, but remember, Virginia can score. When you just look at Notre Dame against Virginia on paper, you think this is a no brainer. 
Virginia can put some points up. Look at the totals they put up the last couple of weeks. So if you're going to make a bet, it's not just automatically on the spread. You've got options here. All right, Scott, what, what do you say about this one? I like your analysis. I thought that was right on. I really, and, and let's Where be truthful. Are we brothers today. Brian Kelly has been magnificent coaching this team to only one loss. This is not a very talented Notre Dame team. So I, 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 my hat is tipped to Brian Kelly up in South Bend, and I would not bet against him on any team that it's a close game. All right, let's get to picks. Hammer? I'm going to keep it with this game. Okay. I like Notre Dame six and a half here. It was five and a half most of the week, and I felt a lot better about that. Uh, but a lot of money coming in, pushing this to six and a half. I like Notre Dame in this spot, though. I think it's a close game. I think it's going to be a high-scoring game. Uh, but Notre Dame's just got too many playmakers. The guys that start for Notre Dame, uh, they would start on Virginia. Could the guys on Virginia start for Notre Dame? I don't know. Late in the season, it comes down to playmakers. I think Notre Dame has more of them. They're starting to figure out that offensive line a little bit. I'll lay the six and a half with Notre Dame. All right, Scott, what you got? Nothing. <laughs> can I say that? You can say that. I mean, you can say that. Do you have another game, though? I do have another game. game. Right. Yeah, I have a game. Now, this is something I know something about, okay? <laughs> okay. Finally on this show, I know <laughs> something about this game. It's about styles. Purdue owns Iowa. Mm -hmm. Iowa owns Minnesota. It really comes down to Iowa. You can see the point spread. Well, you're not seeing the point spread, but I believe is like a four and a half point. I would lean towards them. But 37, that's about as low as it's going to be all year. I like Iowa and Minnesota in this game offensively. Iowa will loosen up more against Minnesota. Uh, Iowa kind of feels like they have an understanding of Minnesota's defense. And I don't think Minnesota's going to have a problem at least scoring 14. The biggest thing in this game, though, is Iowa finally has gone to a different quarterback. That's what's been holding them back all year. You have uh, Penix for Indiana. That's you have right. Petrus for Iowa. And we have a, a, a producer named Peter. It's very dangerous to say <laughs> these names on live TV. While you're drinking. You say them Why? Slowly. But I did it. It's uh, one of those, uh, uh, what are those uh, words? Or Peter fucked the fuck the, 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 the. <laughs> We're like all scared to go there, right? All I'm saying is don't sleep on those Golden Gophers, Scott. Nah, mm -hmm. That's going to be a low-scoring game. No. I think it's going to be a low-scoring game. 50. The odds makers think it's going to be a low-scoring game. No. It's not one of my favorite bets, but don't sleep on those Golden Gophers getting the points here. Over 50 in that game. Over 50 in that game. All right, hey, coming up next on All Indiana Bets, the guys will make their specialty picks, which I love. I know you do, too. Scott will have his long shot. Can't wait for that. And then Jason Hammer with his degenerate special. We're rolling. We are making so much break. money today. It's sick. We'll be right back. <laughs> The Long Shot, presented for the people by Caesar Sportsbook. That's right. You know what time it is. It is time for the Long Sitting Shot up. with Mr. Scott Long. Uh -oh. He up. gets his flex. Get he gets the glasses his ready. He's Get ready the glasses ready. Mm. This is where Mr. Long, he picks his favorite underdog play of the week. Uh, this team might not have a good chance to win, but all we need is to make Scott, you know, do the, the cover and make Scott's... Uh, Make Scott's dreams come true by giving him his, his I'm own I'm still segment. presented by done. the people, Mackenzie. <laughs> you are I am the people's people. champion. Here I am. <laughs> I look at this game uh, in two different ways. First off, this is a lot about Oregon. Oregon obviously has a lot of pressure. Yes, they do need to have some style points, but they have Utah on deck. And I think Utah is actually playing the best of any team in the Pac-12. Then you've got Washington State, who's had the craziest season where their coach wouldn't get vaccinated in the state of Washington. Uh, if you're a state employee, you are no longer a state employee at a certain point. So he gave up that job because of the vaccination thing. Here's what I would tell you. Washington State, though, has really kind of coalesced around that. They've played really well over there. And they're a tough team. I don't think Oregon's that tough. They've been barely sliding by. I wouldn't be surprised if they slide by again. I don't like Oregon's coaching staff. They have a lot of talent, but uh, don't be afraid to even maybe throw maybe a few shekels on Washington State at a really high number on the money line. That's uh -oh. how much I like uh -oh. this. Uh -oh. Oh. Hey. Do you want to get nuts? Let's get nuts. 
All right, now it's time for our Hammer's favorite segment of the show. Uh, it's a fan favorite as well, the Degenerate Special. These are the games only degenerate gamblers like Hammer are putting their hard-earned money on. He bet the mortgage last week. I hope it fared well. We won. <laughs> yeah. We won last week. Yeah. We won by the hook last week, which means I think I'm the first guy ever to win a bet by the hook. Yes. Usually everybody gets beat by that. Right. Uh, we're going to the American Conference here, Eastern Carolina at Memphis, and this is what we call a good old-fashioned trap game, okay? So Eastern Carolina, with a win today, can become bowl eligible. Memphis has had the equivalent of murderer's row in terms of the American Conference, in terms of scheduling. These are the teams that Memphis has played recently. Navy, Central Florida, SMU. They've got number 17 Houston next week. You know what this is? This is a trap. This is a good old fashioned trap game. Eastern Carolina's got a lot riding on this and I'm getting five points here. I will hitch my wagon to Eastern Carolina plus five trap game situation for Memphis, mm. put some cash down on Eastern Carolina, and if you can find a sizzler, we're going to it. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't love the sizzler. They're the he Pirates. <laughs> the East Carolina Pirates. Greenville, North Carolina. I just looked it up because I had no idea they even had a football team. That's what makes this a good degenerate. degenerate They're special. getting five yeah. points today. Let's go. Let's go. Hey, it's time for another break. Stick around, though. Our best bets coming up and Hammer's ball in on a budget. Parlay coming up next. The best bet is brought to you by Evan Williams. Bourbon done right. I know we're shocked this show is still on. So are we, but we're so happy because we're making so many, so many people so and much money. And they give us a fully yeah. stocked bar. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> Evan Williams hooks it up. This is amazing. I can't believe they keep inviting us back I know. every week. Hey, it's a party every single weekend, and you're invited. So happy you're here. Hey, okay. So they say third time is a charm. But when it comes to this show, really, number four is what matters most because Hammer and Scott, we've each already given you a trio of college football plays, but these are their best bets of the day. Hammer, start us off. Rocky Top, you'll always be home sweet home to me. Good old Rocky Top. Woo! Rocky Top, Tennessee. <laughs> uh, they're not going to beat Georgia today, but I love this total. Tennessee's got one of the best offenses in the SEC. And 17 and a half feels like a really low number here. Look, Georgia eventually is going to have to be challenged in the SEC. They have not had one close game yet. The last two games for Georgia are a non-conference cupcake and Georgia Tech. Sooner or later, we're going to have to see if the Georgia secondary is as good as we think it is. Georgia's defense is legit, but 17 and a half? You're telling me the best offense, one of the best in the SEC, can't put up more than 18? I'm not buying it. We're going over 17 and a half point total for the Tennessee Volunteers. All right, Scott, what you got? I wish I had like an extra thing in my ear when he sings. That I always <laughs> thought that Rocky Top uh, was a terrible song. The best fight song in college football. Well, now I realize. Jason Allen Hammer. Oh, that voice. Oh my god. My woo was solid though. It Your was. Woo Nobody was woos quite like McKenzie. <laughs> Thank goodness we put that woo in. What? <laughs> and you're the SEC guy. I rarely pick SEC because I feel like that's your territory. But this one really jumped out at me. It jumped out at me for some technical reasons. I also think the lines of AM are way better than Old Miss. Uh, Jimbo Fisher's been there a little longer. He's got the kind of recruits. They've been in an upturn so much that they beat Alabama. But here's the big point. The coaches that are older, like a guy named Jimbo. <laughs> <laughs> Jimbo! Hey, Lane Kiffin! Lane, guys like Jimbo. Jimbo. Lane Kiffin is the most annoying. He's that, he's like to like 30 year old, 35 year old people looking at their 10 year old watching TikTok. He's TikTok to Jimbo <laughs> Fisher. So what I'm trying to tell you is he has got them amped up. Mississippi is going to be throwing it all over the field, and I expect there's going to be turnovers. I love AM today. 
Um, I wanted to go with Texas again just because I love the pole assassin and that yes. whole story, but I didn't like that game, so Texas A&M <laughs> down the road, that's my team. Oh, so solid. All right, Lane my Kiffin ball is, is that. the TikTok of coaches. <laughs> he is. That is the only breakdown you're going to get of that, and it's right here on Thank All you. Indiana Bet. That's right, that's right. We're looking for our ballers now. Okay, if you want a ball but you're on a budget, no problem. you got to dream big. Okay, next segment for you, Hammer's World Famous, Ballin' on a Budget Parlay, five bucks to win 60, let's go. So we call this ballin' on a budget, but this is really betting for poor people. I've been there, <laughs> I understand. Maybe you got Christmas presents to buy, maybe you got bills, but if you just got five bucks, you can get a full Saturday's worth of entertainment here. I like Michigan State, I like Kentucky, I like the over in this Georgia-Tennessee game, and Purdue, because of Mr. 63% sitting to my left, Scott Long, he tells me that it's a guarantee oh, that Purdue no, no. is going to cover 20 and a half. Guaranteed. I've got them in the ball and on a budget parlay. Five bucks to win 60. <laughs> <laughs> this is your best ball in the budget. I'm looking at that. I'm like, I like all of those. <laughs> and I really think you're going to actually win it. This is going to be the one where we're going to come back and show this next week. You put five bucks on how much are you going to make on five bucks? 60 bucks. That's awesome. Yes. I right. am down with that. We're down which means with that. we're going to go 0 for 4. Yes. <laughs> Cheers right. to that. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. It's time to talk a little college hoops. Purdue got its season started in early in style. So how many wins should we expect from the Boilers this season? The guys will give you all their thoughts next. Feeling it or fading it? Don't go anywhere. All Indiana Bats is presented by Lunazul Tequila. Feed the Wolf. Welcome back to All Indiana Bats. All right, this one is for our basketball fans out there. This is a segment you've been waiting for. College hoop season tipped off earlier this week. And we are going to celebrate by playing a little game we like to call Feeling It or Fading It. All right, so are you guys ready to go? Let's do it. We know if you're feeling or fading. All right, so let's get started with this. First up, we have seventh ranked Purdue opened its season with a blowout win over Bellarmine on Tuesday. The Boilermakers season win total currently is set at 26 and a half. Now, Scott, we're going to start with you. 27 or more wins for the Boilers this season. Are you feeling it or fading it? This, uh, I, I asked our producer when he threw this out, I'm like, okay, so are we talking the whole season, Big Ten tournament, NCAA wins? If that's the case, and that's what the fine print tells you, go with the over on that, because that means that Purdue could still lose about seven games in the Big Ten, win a couple Big Ten tournament games, win a couple NCAA tournament games. I like Purdue as this, as the best team Purdue has probably had since that trio with Robbie Hummel and Moore. Juwan Johnson, Johnson mm -hmm. each one more. more. And Hummel got hurt, or that was a Final Four team. This is the best team they've had since then. Uh, I would uh, be feeling that. All right. What you, about you bring Cameron? up such a good point about reading the fine print yeah. because a lot of times you have these future bets on your favorite app sure. and it's will Purdue win the Big Ten but it has to be the Big Ten tournament championship to go along with it so you always got to read the fine print here uh, but win totals for the season I'm with Purdue this Purdue team is really really good the guys that are on the bench for Purdue would start on most Big Ten teams. Yeah. We kind of talked about this with Notre Dame and Virginia in a football game earlier. Look at some of the guys like Williams and Eric Hunter that the Boilers have on the bench right now. They're stacked. There's no excuse for Purdue not to have an amazing run, and this feels very doable by Matt Painter's crew. All right, so let's go to uh, the thing in the Big Ten. But let's uh, IU go to IU. They also started the season with a win on Tuesday. Hoosiers hung on to beat Eastern Michigan, thanks in large part to 21 points and 14 rebounds from Trace Jackson Davis. Old TJD is one of the favorites to win the Wooden Award this season. You can currently find him hovering at around plus 2,000. Hammer, are you feeling or fading uh, him to win at college basketball's most coveted individual award? Even though plus 2,000 is amazing value for a guy that's probably going to be a first team all-american i'm going to fade this oh. because usually that award goes to the best player on the best team yeah. in the country mm -hmm. and i don't think indiana's going to be that uh indiana's going to be better indiana covered against uh, northern illinois last night which means that i beat dan dockage in another <laughs> side bet <laughs> Uh, but as much as I like Trace Jackson Davis, he's not going to win the marquee award in college basketball. That's, uh, that's a fade from me. Fade for you. What about you, Scott? 
I always try to explain to you that should totally be a fade for anybody, unless you're an IU fan. <laughs> Okay, once again, put five or ten dollars on it. You got the whole season. It's like playing fantasy football or fantasy basketball. Lay five or ten on him because you see what he did last night, and the whole time you're like, he deserves it. And at the end of the season, you can have righteous indignation. Yes. And be ten dollars less. And be ten dollars <laughs> less. Yes. What's the matter? I, I like that. I like yeah, that. Yeah, the whole season. It's 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 like when you go to a casino and you don't have much money and you play the nickel slots. That's what this is. Yes, it's just fun. Penny slots bad. pay out more than nickel slots. A little inside info for wow. you. There you go. That's what we do. We're giving you so much mm. great, so much gold right here. Coming up, we've got more picks to get to, including those from the cash man. Our guy Alan Cashman is going to make you some money on the other side of the break. Hey, welcome back to All Indiana Bets, everyone. This is the Wise Guys segment. My name is Peter Hood. You don't care about me, though. This is the star of the show over there on the other side of the screen, Alan Cashman. He is also known as the Cash Man. Cashman, we, we were, all good things must come to an end. The winning streak, it came to an end last week, but we're ready to bounce back, ready to roll. What's the first play you got for us? Thanks, Peter. We're going to take Washington State plus 14 at Oregon. You look at Washington State, they come in, their winners are four of their last five. Their quarterback, Jaden Deloria, he leads the Pac-12 with 17 touchdown passes. And Washington State went to Arizona a couple weeks ago, Arizona State, I'm sorry, a couple weeks ago, and they they really controlled the game. They won that one 34-21. Cougar defense, fifth in the nation in takeaways. They have nine takeaways in the last four games. So I think Washington State gives Oregon a game here. Washington State 6-0, and their last six games against the spread, five Five and their last uh, five against the spread as a dog, and Oregon 0 and six against the spread their last six games. I think this shapes up for Washington State plus 14. Yeah, you never really know how those coaching changes are going to affect the team, but Washington State seems to have really rallied over the last couple of weeks, and uh, obviously Oregon, like you said, has not been great against the spread this year. All right, Cashman, what's up? Play number two. We'll take the Miami Hurricanes, minus two and a half at Florida State. Miami, they come in, their winners are three three in a row. They're getting really good quarterback play from redshirt freshman Tyler Van Dyke. A lot of trends also going against Florida State here. They're three and seven, last 10 games against the spread as a home dog. One and five against the spread, their last six conference games. And 0 oh and five against the spread following a straight up loss. So Miami took last year's meeting 52 to 10. I'm going to take them this weekend, minus two and a half. They've got a lot of momentum and I like them in this situation. And he by the way is still despite last week's struggles 14 and 4 on the season picking on all indiana bets so uh you'd be wise to pay attention and you'd be wise to go to where cashman where can they find your picks go to the cashmanwins.com right now still have the special up a dollar a week one year 52 dollars it's going to get you uh, access to everything entire college basketball season including march madness coming up baseball next year the rest of football get you everything one year 52 dollars the cashmanwins.com we call him the wise guy for a reason he knows this stuff cashman thank you we'll talk to you again next week thanks peter 77% for the cash man Woo! picking games on this show. And he's got the same pick that you do for your long shot, yeah. the, uh, the Cougs, Washington State's Cougars. Well, it makes sense. If you're going to be uh, an expertise uh, a little bit on the Cougars, we both live in Fishers. There's a lot of Cougars <laughs> up there. You Experts, go, eh? Yes, right. you, yeah. you go up to Kroger about noon. <laughs> a lot of Cougars up there. I'm just going to tell you, be careful. You might need a net. <laughs> Woo! Okay. On that note, you guys, let's get to uh, some more picks. Camera. All right. Let's do it here. Um, I am looking at Michigan State here, minus 11 and a half against Maryland. I could give you a lot of information about how Michigan State's got the better running back. Michigan State's got the better offensive line. But Maryland stinks. Yeah. Maryland stinks. <laughs> and if you can get this at 11 and a half, considering it was 12 and 12 and a half most of the week, you should write a letter to Santa Claus because this was an early gift. Take Michigan State minus 11 against Maryland. All right. Scott, what are you up? I'm looking official. Okay, I got yes. like an iPad. You yep. know like when you watch the newscasters and they, they pull this out? Do you ever do that, Mackenzie, where yeah. you're standing up with an iPad? <laughs> <laughs> um, when, there, when there's nothing uh, on the prompt together. Yes, yeah, exactly. Backup. I'm telling you right now, this is 
I like Oregon State. I think they're really well coached. That was a really good Purdue Oregon State game. Yeah. Who knew? Right. And I'm not even touching anything about the Beavers. I'm just going to tell you <laughs> Stanford is down the tubes. Stanford <laughs> beat. Oregon. That's the one <laughs> loss. Face they face right now. He's dying over here. Okay. So what I'm trying to explain to you is Stanford is starting a freshman quarterback. This is the first time that uh, Coach Shaw has ever started a freshman at quarterback. Not even Andrew Luck or anybody else there got to start as a freshman. Fade Stanford the rest of the year. They lost 52 to 7 to Utah last week. And when you lose to Utah, and then at the end, you're like, I can't even buy a drink after the game. I'm in Utah. <laughs> That's me. That's All right, hey, speaking of, we're going to look of disgust on Lindsay, our floor director, right Lindsay? now. Look at that look of disappointment this on her face. Is. She's new, but she keeps coming back, and that's why we love her. Okay, we're going to head to Fountain Square. They're going to actually teach us how to make a new drink. It's called a New York Sour on the rocks. Coming up next. On the Rocks is brought to you by Evan Williams. Bourbon done right. Hello, friends. Welcome back to another edition of On the Rocks. Uh, Brent Holberson here with Heaven Hill Brands. Come to you today from beautiful Fountain Square at the Thunderbird. We got Tyler and we have our global whiskey ambassador, Miss Bernie Lovers, joining us again. Gentlemen, how are we today? Fantastic. Great to be back. Good to be behind the bar with you, Tyler. You're going to make us up a, a New York sour, I believe. Yeah, a staple here at Thunderbird. Yeah, with Evan Williams' single barrel, which was Parker Beam's favorite whiskey. When you went to his house, he would immediately grab the uh, Evan Williams single barrel because that was his baby as our master distiller emeritus. Show us how you make the New York sour. We're, we're picking this as the base just because it's going to stand up amongst all the other modifiers and uh, sour elements. It's real bold stuff. We're going to do two ounces of the 1783. The single barrel. We're going to do an ounce of lemon juice. Nice. Then I'm going to do three quarters of an ounce of a Demerara syrup. We do uh, a one to one ratio of turbinado sugar and water. Uh, next, we're going to add our egg white. I'm going to break that. It's kind of it's a delicate art. Once we get that in there. It's going to make it foamy then, I believe, right? Oh, yeah. We're going to have to get some stiff peaks. Beat that. And we start to shake. Yeah, Evan Williams, the first licensed distiller in Kentucky to commercially make whiskey that we can go back and find. And again, was our master distiller emeritus Parker Beam's favorite whiskey at his house. So with the egg white cocktail, you gotta do a two-step process here. You do uh, an ice shake, you beat that really good. You remove the ice and you do what we call a dry shake. Put that back in there without ice and you just give that another nice shake. And Evan Williams single barrel is a rye bourbon. So you're going to have that nice spice, that caraway seed in the back of your palate that gives it a nice, nice pop of spice in the back. But that vanilla, honey, and caramel, and boy, vanilla really is prevalent. I think that's going to uh, pair well with all the other elements of this drink. So we take uh, what we've shaken twice, added it in there to the glass. You can see that nice head of foam uh, about an inch or two off of uh, where the sour ends. And with a New York Sour, instead of bitters, we're gonna do about half an ounce of red wine. This is Chateau de saint Eulalie. It's a Gamay Syrah blend. Goes well with the other elements here. A bold wine for the bold whiskey. And there you have it, the New York Sour. Got that nice gradient there. Enjoy. Well, thank you, wow, what a treat. Cheers. Outstanding. New York Sour here at the Thunderbird. Come get one for yourself. Join us again next time on On the Rocks. Cheers. Oh, that looks awesome right there. Brent! Wow. Now, we've got a little cranberry in yeah, Evan Williams going good. here. Uh, this is in honor of the awful Indiana and Rutgers game <laughs> that many of you feel compelled to watch today. Nah. All right, let's recap our picks yes. here. This is how we're going to get rich today, kids. This is going to be the greatest day of our lives. Purdue point total 
I got this at 20 and a half earlier in the week. 21 and a half feels a little high, but I'm still gonna hitch my wagon to it. Notre Dame, minus six and a half. Anything less than a touchdown, I'm in. The Degenerate Special, the Pirates of East Carolina, trap game at Memphis. We're gonna take the points. Good old Rocky Top. Woo! Rocky Top, Tennessee, over 17 and a half total points for the Volunteers. And Michigan State, minus 11 and a half because Maryland stinks. I don't know what it was, but the Rocky Top sounded better this time. <laughs> yeah, and people that are watch, I get this is the number one question I get. You are so lucky you work with Mackenzie. You have no idea. She's not only funny. Here's what she brings in today. This Cookies. Is like, it, it looks like a biscuit, but it's a cookie. This is a, I mean, forget about it. She's the absolute best. She really is. And this is not my best bet, but it's a good one. Disrespecting the Boilermakers. This is probably close to my best bet, if you really want to know. Minnesota, Iowa, over 37. I know Hammer doesn't love that one. I think it's going to be over 50 in that game. Oh, is that the Cougars right there? That is the Cougars. Yes, we are all about the Cougars the on this show. has got that too. He does, so I got to imagine that's going to work. The Aggies, Jimbo hates Lane. That would be a great, like, a <laughs> sitcom. Jimbo hates Lane. And ultimately, the Beavers of Oregon State, keep a straight face, everybody. 12 and a half, Stanford, the Cardinals. They're treating last season when they had so many COVID problems and they weren't even going to have a season, a lot of their sports. They're playing like that right now. They might as well just shut down, not because of COVID, just because they suck. They're a bad team with a freshman quarterback that's waiting on next year. Go with the Beavers. So you got the Cougars and the Beavers today. Good for you. Classy. All right. Uh, let's go to our producer. Oh, wait a minute. What is that? Look okay. at this guy right here. Look at this handsome, he is masculine, tall. big, hairy American winning machine. Uh, Peter Hood is our new producer, and we're contractually obligated to give him some screen yeah. time, apparently. Yeah. So, Peter, go ahead and do whatever it is do that you, you do, were told Peter. you have to do. Hey, listen, first pick on the show, so it is only right that I fade <laughs> Scott Long as know. hard as humanly possible. <laughs> Scott, I know you're an Iowa guy. I think you're overthinking this one, man. Padilla mania is getting out of control yeah, in your head. The new quarterback. I get it. A lot of hype around him. Minnesota's got some film on him now, though. He played well last week, but now he's the starter. Different expectations, different pressure that comes with that. Minnesota very reliant on the run. It's hard to run the ball against Iowa. Minnesota 122nd in the nation in passing offense this year. So I think the Golden Gophers are going to are gonna struggle to get to 10, 14 points in this game. I think Iowa wins maybe 17 to 13, but Minnesota's top 10 in the nation in total defense. I was top 10 in the nation in total defense. This feels like an old school Big Ten game to me. Just a, a bad weather old school Big Ten game, guys. Well, you know what? That's interesting. You know, Peter does a great job with the graphics. Our show looks better because he does. Of it. Hey, he thanks, had a God. really important graphic earlier. It said 63%. You're in that 37% range. I'm good at math. I give your pick a 37% chance of beating me like anybody else that comes up against me. Ask Hammer about how the uh, challenge bets have gone this year. You can see his Don Johnson, not exactly, but you can't see it. We're going to talk about it tomorrow <laughs> when the challenge is. What time is our show tomorrow? Uh, that is noon to one on Ooh. Sunday. Our shows are always one hour before. leading you up to kickoff, yeah. right? And thank you to Peter Hood, our producer. Thank you, Peter. When he turns 18, he's going to break a lot of hearts. I uh, know. Uh, Mackenzie's going to come back and give us the Mick pick, and we'll wrap up the big show. Do not go anywhere. This is all Indiana Bets. Ooh. All right, well, we've talked a lot of football on the show, but this may be the most important game going on in the state of Indiana today. It's a battle for the Monon Bell between Wabash and DePaul. There is no other game like it. This will be the 127th meeting between the two programs. Kickoff is set for 1 o'clock over on our sister station, My Indy TV. I'm actually excited about this because I love that everybody that plays football at these schools are playing for the love of the game. 
Right. Totally. And I could give you some props on uh, Jack Brush, the paw kicker, how many field goals he's going to get. <laughs> but what I will tell you, what I love, there's the tradition. And the greatest tradition of DePaul or Wabash is the boulder run. Do you know what this is at DePaul? This is a streakers. They streak across DePaul <laughs> thing and they touch a boulder. <laughs> So that's my info on that game. I, I don't know if we're going to cover that on 23. Mackenzie, right. you got a winner for us. Yeah, so check that out. Andy Sorry. Boy. Okay, yes, let's step aside, boys. It's time for the Mick Pick. Oh, okay. We have to do this. It's okay. a world famous thing. A uh, few people get hyped about it, like my mom. All right, okay, so like I like Baylor plus four and a half, hosting Oklahoma. Sooners are unbeaten, but they flirted with disaster a lot this year. So even though they've looked better in the past couple of weeks, this is way too many points for Oklahoma to cover in a tough 